Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and at the request of a lot of our viewers, we are starting this new series called Correlate Clinically where we are going to discuss a lot of cases on our console and we are going to discuss how to view these scans and plan surgery. So this series is going to be very interesting for all the people who are involved in managing the cases that we are going to discuss. Today's topic is on discussing some interesting pancreatic cancer cases. And as we have already discussed, it is very important to view these scans on console to understand the extent of disease as well as for preoperative surgical planning. As my mentors used to say, you have to perform the surgery on the scan once and then perform it in the theater to avoid surprises intraoperatively. So let us view the first case today. What I am going to do is I am going to scroll but I am not going to discuss the findings. So you can see the scan first. Try to identify the disease. Try to stage the disease as I already said that it is pancreatic cancer and Try to plan the surgery for the disease so that you understand what all to see in the scan and for radiologists to understand what all are important factors to see in this scan to plan the surgery or to discuss the scans with your surgeon. I would keep hinting, you can look at the phases, what phase it is, you can understand the disease. You can look for vascular variations, you can look for metastasis, you can look for lymph nodes, you can look for ascites, a lot of other factors that you can find in this scan. Okay, so now let us see together. The first point that I would like to highlight here is that when you see such scans, don't fixate on pancreatic cancer. Suppose exam has this scan, then a very important point that you can see here is the presence of gastric varices, right? So before going into details of pancreatic cancer, when you see this scan, you should realize that this patient has a lot of gastric varices and that is going to impact your surgical management. So the arrow points at the presence of gastric varices and this implies that the patient may have problems in the splenic vein. So this is important to understand. Other thing you can look at is the intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation as shown by the arrow. And the dilatation is present in both the central as well as the peripheral biliary radicals. You can see a very interesting venous radical that is opening into the portal vein. And if you missed it, I will mark it by an arrow. This vessel is very interesting because in presence of gastric varices, this vessel dilates. No points for guessing. It is the left coronary vein. Right. So left coronary vein is one of the orthosystemic channels and it opens up when there is a problem with the splenic vein. So that is what has happened in this case. So gastric varices dilated left coronary, coronary vein. Now what the arrow is pointing towards is the dilated pancreatic duct and the dilated common bile duct. This is known as the double duct sign which is pathognomonic of a pancreatic head cancer. So you can appreciate the double duct sign and that part now is the tumor where the ducts have disappeared. So that is the mass being highlighted in the head of pancreas as well as extending into the unseen head process and the arrow is pointing towards the duodenum. So this case is a case of pancreatic head cancer and once you know it is pancreatic head cancer, you look at the vascular resectability criteria. So now you can see the superior mesenteric vein and you can see the right colic vein, you can see the jejunal trunk. We'll try to highlight some of these vessels and look at the plane of resectability. 
So here you can see the superior mesenteric vein in relation with the mass and you can appreciate a black thin layer between the vein and the mass that is the plane of dissection. What that means is that the mass is not abutting or encasing the superior mesenteric vein. The red line marks the right colic or the accessory right colic vein, which opens into the superior mesenteric vein. This vessel needs, seems to be quite close to the tumor, but that is not a problem. Essentially, the superior mesenteric vein is free from the tumor. There you can see the plane of demarcation between superior mesenteric vein and the tumor. The plane has to be seen in both the axial and the coronal sections to avoid over or under diagnosing the situation of vascular resectability criteria. Now we already know that the splenic vein is involved by a thrombus. So this large vein that is opening into the superior mesenteric vein is not the splenic vein. So if you can take a guess. Okay, so that is the inferior mesenteric vein. So inferior mesenteric vein is again dilated because the splenic vein is absent. So we have seen the left coronary vein, we have seen the right colic vein, we have seen the inferior mesenteric vein. The splenic vein is thrombose. You can see a very small origin of the splenic vein there. And then the superior mesenteric vein divides into the jejunal and the ileal trunk, right? That is the jejunal trunk being sown. That is a jejunal trunk and the remaining is the ileal trunk. So that is the venous anatomy and the relations of the venous structures in this area. All of this is important to plan the surgery for this patient. If you look at the superior mesenteric artery, the artery is obviously free from the tumor. But there is another important thing about the superior mesenteric artery. The arrow is pointing at the superior mesenteric artery. If you can identify the important point that I am talking about, otherwise we'll look at the arterial phase for more clarity. But essentially the superior mesenteric artery is free from the tumor abutment or if so confirming our findings in the arterial phase, the superior mesenteric artery is free from the tumor. But the important point that I was trying to show was this. This is the right hepatic artery which is traveling behind the bile duct and the portal vein. And this is the left hepatic artery, the other arrow is showing the left hepatic artery which is joining the splenic artery. So the left hepatic artery and right hepatic artery are not joining with each other. If you can appreciate, the left hepatic artery is joining the splenic artery after giving the gastroduodenal artery. And the right hepatic artery is replaced and arising from the superior mesenteric artery. So this patient has a replaced right hepatic artery, which is shown by the small arrow. That is the replaced right hepatic artery. This is important to identify to avoid disasters during surgery. So the, the arrow is pointing towards the gastroduodenal artery, which is arising from the common hepatic, from the celiac trunk, which is formed of the hepatic artery and the splenic artery. And uh, hepatic is giving only the left hepatic artery after giving the gastroduodenal artery. Now to look at the lymph nodes, the portal venous phase is better. There is only one or two lymph nodes in the plane of rejection. If you can see anterior to the pancreatic duct and the hepatic artery, there is a small node as pointed by the arrow. There is no peritoneal disease far from the tumor. And most of the disease that is visible is in the rejection area. So this patient did undergo a surgery and had an R0 rejection. Now confirming our findings in the coronal section. You can see that the portal vein is free from the tumor. The plane between tumor and portal vein is well defined. There is no abutment or encasement. The inferior mesenteric vein can be seen very well prominent. The arrow is showing the inferior mesenteric vein and the coronary vein is also prominent. You can see the coronary vein as well as pointed by the arrow. 
Now looking at the arterial phase, you can see the replaced right hepatic artery arising from the SMA beautifully as seen by this line pointing towards the right hepatic artery. No significant nodes, no ascites, no liver lesions and no peritoneal deposits. No lesions in the lower sections of the lung that are seen. This patient is operable pancreatic cancer. So this is the second case that we are going to see today. Again, I will just scroll through the console and you can have a look. Look at the points of rejectability that we have discussed because that is the aim of correlating clinically. This scan has been done to assess the staging of the patient who has presented with obstructive jaundice. And so your aim is to give idea of what the disease is, what is the extent and whether the patient has operable disease or there are issues that put the patient for neoadjuvant or palliative treatment. Notice the phases. Notice the vascular variations. Three fluid, fever lesions, lung lesions, metastasis, commonly seen points. Also important is to understand that when we are seeing these scans, it is also about spending time on the scans. Do you need 10 minutes to see this scan? The answer is no, because there are significant peritoneal deposits. And that means that the patient is beyond rejectable stage, right? The arrow is showing a peritoneal nodule, lymph nodes beyond the area of rejection, so when the patient has this kind of picture, if you can identify the peritoneal deposits and multiple nodes outside the rejection area, you don't need to spend a lot of time on viewing the scan because you know that the patient's going for neoadjuvant or palliative chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So this is what is meant by correlating the findings clinically. If you miss these peritoneal deposits, then you waste time on viewing the entire scan. Yes, there is a mass in the head of the pancreas. In the arterial phase, there are no vascular variations and the SMA is free. In the portal venous phase, you can see that the entire portal vein is encased by the tumor. Okay, The arrow is showing the portal vein on the hepatic side. And when you go towards the pancreas, you can't see the portal vein. Portal vein is encased in the tumor and artery is free from the tumor. But the key point to show this case is that if you know that there are peritoneal deposits, the local findings don't matter much because you have already staged the disease as stage 4. And that is very important to understand. Yes, no ascites, no liver deposits, no deposits in the lung but there are peritoneal deposits and bulky lymphadenopathy. Portal vein is encased and superior mesenteric artery is free. These are the points that we would like to know in this scan. So just to show you how the portal vein encasement looks like in this scan, there you can see the portal vein is completely encased by the tumor. The tumor is crossing to the left of the portal vein. That means that the portal vein is encased by the lesion. So this is the third case that we are going to see today. We are looking at the phases of the third case. Like I have said, just to revise, you can look at the lower lung cuts, you look at the liver, ascites, peritoneal deposits, where the masses are there, varices, nodes, liver lesions, commonly seen points, vascular variations and the relations of the vessels with the tumor. If you note down these points, then it would be very easy when we discuss the case together. So now when we look we know that the superior mesenteric artery is free from the tumor. Of course, you have identified the pancreatic head mass by now. 
the arterial anatomy is normal. That is the GDA. Then the right and left arteries are opening into the CBA. The arrow points towards the proper hepatic artery. And you can see that it is anterior to the portal vein. Going to the portal phase now, you can see that the pancreatic duct is dilated and the common bile duct is dilated. Again, the double duct sign essentially means that the patient has a pancreatic head mass. That is the portal vein where you can see the branches of the portal vein. We have already discussed the branches that you should be looking for. The right colic, the middle colic, the inferior mesenteric. Here you can see that the portal vein is in abutment with the tumor. What that means is that less than 180 degree of the portal vein is involved or in close contact with the tumor. When complete portal vein is encased, as in the second case, the definition is more than 180 degree involvement of the portal vein by the tumor. Here you can see the change in shape of the portal vein. Usually this happens when the portal vein is involved by the tumor, whether abutment or encasement. This patient has around 180 degrees of involvement. What that means is that the patient is a candidate for neoadjuvant chemotherapy, making this case a borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. Because there are no liver lesions, the small lesion that you see here is a cyst. So there are no liver lesions, no big nodes. The nodes that are present are there in the rejection area. There are no peritoneal deposits as we saw in the second case. And the lower lung cuts are free. So this patient goes for neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by reassessment. That is a protocol that we follow. That is the head mass. Important point to know is that if the duct is traversing the head mass, your diagnosis is different than when the duct is not traversing the head mass, right? So we will keep looking at scans like this and we will discuss clinically relevant points. The simple words that we look for in a report are vascular variations, vascular abutment or encasement, zone 4 or zone 3 involvement of the superior mesenteric vein and the portal vein, presence or absence of varices, deposits, peritoneal deposits, ascites, liver lesions, and lung nodules. Some of the commonly noticed points in the scan. Let us know if you want any changes in this plan, but this is how we intend on discussing in this series called Correlate Clinically. With this, I, Dr. Gunjan Desai, sign off from the Radiology Console for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.